Good morning. Good morning. I hope you all are doing okay. I panicked this morning. I think, you know, it's a computer technician's nightmare whenever the clocks change. And if you remember back in 2000 when everybody was worried about what would happen to computer programming. Well, this morning, our live stream device froze. And I'm probably, it probably froze because it didn't know what to do with the extra hour, or the, the extra hour time was gonna have this evening. But I think I have things working, and if you're out there listening to us this morning, welcome. If you see the news on Facebook, in the North Lake community that we have chopped down the cherry tree, we have. I know some of you have seen that cherry tree, the weeping cherry, uh, outside my office for many, many, many years. And I was, for the last few years, it's been um, fighting a disease. And the disease has finally caught up to it. It was this winter, if you may have noticed, the tree looked like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And it just keeps going and going. And uh, over the last week or so, I was touching the roof of the church, and we thought it's time to chop it down. So George Washington did not chop it down. We chopped it down. And it had to go because it was diseased, and it was just not doing very well. Uh, how do you look inside? So let me just say three quarters of that tree were not connected to the ground. Three quarters of the tree were not connected so to the ground. So only the branches on the back that on the backside that we're holding it up. It was so, totally rotten in the first three or four feet. So it is gone, unfortunately, and, and uh, hopefully this spring we, we will plant another tree out in the back there somewhere to replace the oak tree as well as the cherry. Uh, tomorrow evening, adult study continues uh, with the uh, study of our book, Building Resilience. Please join us either in person or online. Um, at 6.30, I will serve some soup, and um, I've been cooking it all weekend long, believe it or not. No, not really. But do come and have some soup with us at 6.30, and then the uh, adult study program will take off at 7 o'clock. Uh, the Lent and Holy Week schedules are published again for your convenience. Uh, the Neon Meal this uh, month is on March 16th, next Saturday from four to six, and it's a Reuben casserole with uh, corned beef uh, as, as its main component. If you wish to uh, give an Easter flower offering, slips are available at the entrances of the church. And there is a special coffee hour on Palm Sunday. Please take a look at the notes in the bulletin. We're still looking for scholarship recipients. Applications are due by April 1st. And a new item that was added, uh, we want to begin uh, having Eucharistic servers uh, back on the altar. If you're interested, please call Tim Kelly and he will sign you up and train you how to be a Eucharistic server on the altar. So we would like to get that back to pre-pandemic era as well. And with that, I'll take a deep breath. Panic is over, the computer is working, the tree is down, the weather is beautiful, there's no rain. Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Lent. If you would, please stand and let's join in prayer on page two. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy is the earth forever. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in our hearts to keep his law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in our hearts to keep his law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in our hearts to keep his law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in our hearts to keep his law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in our hearts to keep his law. Thou shalt do no murder. 
Lord, have mercy upon us. We point our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us. We point our hearts to keep this law. And thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us. We point our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us. We point our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in right by all these laws on our hearts, we beseech thee. So now hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. <coughs> thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two command commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and carry us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one. Have mercy upon have us. us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one. Have, have mercy upon us. us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one. Have, have mercy upon us. And the Lord be with you. And with us here. And let us now together pray. Praise the Father, whose blessed, blessed, blessed Son, Jesus Christ, Christ came down from heaven. heaven. To be the true bread which gave life to the world. Evermore they us as they bread, they may live in us, and we in him, who loveth and remain with thee in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and now and forever. Amen. And would you please be seated for the reading? A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor they set out by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Eden, but the people became impatient on their way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous spirit of serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 107 responsibly by full verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. And all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. 
Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. A reading of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead to our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace, in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by the grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. But we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now this is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Lord, 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 Lord. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm getting ready for this sermon today. I came upon a story this week about someone who had a very sick pet snake. So they took it to a vet. The vet took a quick look at it and said, sorry, your snake is going to die and that'll be $50. The snake's owner complained, is that all I get for $50? So the vet picked up the snake, took it over to a floppy-eared rabbit, and the rabbit pointed its ears straight up to the ceiling. And then the vet took the snake to a Labrador retriever, and the dog stuck out his tongue and shook his head. And then the vet took the snake to a cat, and the cat opened her eyes very wide and 
shook her head violently. And the vet returned to the owner of the snake and said, that'll be an additional $350. $50 for the second opinion, $75 for the lab test, and $225 for the cat scan. You know, today's story is filled with snakes and serpents. Um, a story I, I enjoy telling, and I'd probably go into more detail if, it, if we were having somewhere a drink or two. But when I was stationed at Fort Lewis, Washington, near Tacoma, my tank unit used to travel over the Cascade Mountains into the Yakima Valley. And the Yakima Valley had this firing center, humongous firing center next to the Hanford Works, the nuclear works there on the Columbia River, and it offered an immense desert environment to accommodate our annual tank gunnery qualification. And along the main road that stretches from the camp or the town into the firing area, first thing you notice on the road, out in the desert, where there's nothing there but a dirt trail are signs that say, caution, stay out of the orchards. And then there are other signs that says, caution, snakes. Watch for snakes. Both signs were a warning, and you have them all and up and down this road, a warning that there were dangerous things along the way that caused you harm, such as farmers using rock salt shotguns to deter apathies and about things that could bite you, hurt you, and in some cases could even kill you. We were warned to avoid the danger. It made sense. It was also great advice. But it may also be, I suspect, how most of us live life anyway. And it's not just about snakes that crawl on the ground. It's the way we live with all the reptilian aspects of life to begin with. Things like avoiding fear, or things that hurt us, that bite us, that cause pain, not just physically, but sometimes emotionally and spiritually. Things like avoiding dealing with our attachments to things, our addictions. Or sometimes we ignore our broken relationships, and some of us, I know I do it too, procrastinate and put off doing the hard work of life. We turn away from our difficulties. We don't acknowledge our fears, resentments, or angers. We deny the things that we have done or left undone, as the prayer says. And after all, isn't that what the sign says? If you see a snake, stay away. But what if the sign said this? What if the signs along the route said, if you see a snake, look him square in the eyes, stare him down, and see who blinks first? That's exactly what the Israelites were instructed to do by Moses. They were impatient in the wilderness. They're living with uncertainties and unknown destinations. Emptiness, thirst, and hunger, and the difficulty of life all manifested themselves as snakes to the Israelites in the wilderness, snakes that would bite, wound, and even kill them. And they had to face the reality of those snakes. It seems like a smart Israel would turn around and go back home. But when the Israelites tried, they died. I guess the saying goes that we are not saved from our snakes by running away. We offer a different option in our gospel and our readings today. Instead of turning away, salvation is offered the Israelites that they were to stare down the very thing they fear. God's ways are not our ways, and God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's Logic sometimes seems foolish, doesn't it? But somehow, authentic life involves facing and looking at the reality of death. Not only a physical death, but also the many ways we can die each day. And daily death happens in a number of ways. 
It happens in our disappointments, our failures, maybe some shattered dreams, regrets and sorrows, maybe in our loneliness, or how about anger, fear and resentment, or by the separation and isolation that's caused by sin. God's remedy today in the readings reveals that the wilderness serpent is both an agent of death and the agent of healing, one and the other. God says, look at it. Look at this very thing that you fear, the thing that bites, terrorizes, and kills you. And those are the places that Christ is victorious. God won't remove the dangers and difficulties of our lives, but the remedy that God offers is a way forward. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. You heard that today. In the person of Jesus, God became flesh to stand with us, stand with us as in the sneaky places of life, but then to heal us and make us alive again. So through Jesus, the place of fear becomes the place of courage, Through Jesus, the place of sin becomes a place of forgiveness. And in Jesus, the place of wounding becomes a place of healing, and the place of falling down becomes a place of rising up. The very things that destroy life in the human world or in God's world, the instruments of healing and salvation. In God's world, the cure for snakes is another snake. The cure for human life is God's incarnate life. Those of you who are willing to look at the snaky places of your lives will see the Son of Man or Jesus being lifted up, healing and transforming this world and this life. You know, Christ tells us today, look on me, believe in me, and live. You know, this holy season of Lent asks us to discover and name the snakes in your lives. And then you have to make a decision. Will you turn and run? Or will you turn and gaze? Lifting up our eyes to meet the gaze of life, the gaze of Jesus Christ himself. Would you please stand and let us together say the creed? <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and while that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God of the Amen. The one we need to walk out, who would give them all the news to remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a king from the Virgin Mary, and was made again. For our sins are crucified by his much flesh. He suffered for death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and the court was with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And the seed of the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, which is worshipped and glorified, he has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and solid church. We acknowledge the baptism and the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us now pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Amen.
mighty and ever living God, we I hold for your thoughts to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We see that these are prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. I grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. You pray so heavenly Father to all bishops and other ministers that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that would be heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech you also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every man, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions, for the welfare and the peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O oh Lord, to comfort and suffer. Barbara, Beverly, Billy, Cameron, Carmela, Colleen, Emily, Aaron, Gloria, George, Harold, Heath, Jerry, Jeffrey, John, Joyce, Karen, Karen, Jerry, Marcia, Mary, Martha, Matthew, Michael, Nan, Richard, Sandy, Scott, Shirley, Susan, Susie, Terry, William, and Burden. Also, we remember all the families who care for their loved ones. In the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, cycle of prayer, we had our prayers for St. Monica's in Hartford, Trinity, Hartford, St. Peter's, Hebron, and St. James, Higginson. For all the ministries to, with, and for women and the Girl Friendly Society, for the Girl Scouts, and for the entire Episcopal Church and those who now name. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Fred Rivers, Joe Prayessi, Jimmy Hoffman, and all those we now name. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of Michael the Archangel, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. And please pass the sign of peace to all of those around you and peace to those folks online as well. Peace be with you. And please be seated for some blessings. Celebrating birthdays this week are Verity Lucille, Dean Dietrich, Marsha Brown, and Nathan Foose. Did I miss anybody's birthday? Did you see your friend? Very well then. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look the favor we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. To Jesus Christ, our Lord.
And for Robert and Margaret Jen, happy anniversary this week. And for them, here is a blessing. God, grant, grant, O oh God, in your compassion that these people having taken each other in marriage and affirm again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the, Holy, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For those of you who may need healing, And even those of you who may not think you need healing, but you really do, this prayer is for you. May you desire to be healed. May what is wounded in your life be restored to good health. May you be receptive to the ways of which healing needs to happen. And may you take good care of yourself. May you extend compassion to all that hurts within your body, mind, and spirit. May you be patient with the time it takes to heal. May you be aware of the wonders of your body, mind, and spirit and their ability to return you to good health. May you be open to receiving from those who offer you kindness, care, and compassion. And may you rest peacefully under the sheltering wings of divine love, trusting in this gracious presence. May you find little moments of beauty and joy to sustain you, and may you keep hope in your heart. And before I say the offering sentence, I invite you all to the altar this morning for communion, so please come on up, and at least you could avoid the furniture that was tipped over last week. And as you come up, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice. Please join me in saying, Praise God, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Praise Him, all creatures here, brother. Praise Him, the Lord, and the Heavenly Host. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And you God be with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is meet and righteous to do. It is very meet, right, and I found in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, the Holy Father, and Almighty, everlasting God. To Jesus Christ our Lord, who is in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, graciously, and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
and all glory be to thee, O Lord our God. For that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world that did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Lord, Father, to hear us with thy word and Holy Spirit bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant we beseech thee that all who partake of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, and by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are both to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name be come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Christ, the 
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, you would be blessed. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in the Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting something wrong, so I'm not being aware that it may look all right. <laughs> 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 Things going on your head, so. <clears throat> so, uh, let us pray the prayer after communion on page 12. Almighty Lord, and Lord of God, we must start with thank thee for that thou dost be used in these holy ministries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood. Serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of Brahma. 